Alrighty, everybody. We're here with a somewhat surprise video as me and Jason unbox Skaven Tide. I don't think we were expecting this one, right, Jason? We were not. Um, so, uh, yeah. They're uh, rolling over to the Kill Team folks to see if if they if we are a fan of Skaven Tide. Yeah, I guess this will give us a chance to try it out. And for my part, because I've been playing Mordheim, this will give me an excuse to start a, a Skaven Warband. So at the very least, if Spearhead is not interesting, I will have that out of it. And I have I have the uh, the Stormcast from the last starter box too. So be between the two, I'll have a little bit of a collection. Yeah, you'll actually be able to play Age of Sigmar. So I guess let's crack this thing open. The box is looking really nice. I do think the art yeah, for this pretty, set looks really cool. It's uh, it's heavier than I was expecting. I mean, I guess there's um, at least one book in there, and I think some of the other books are smaller, but maybe they're full size, judging by the weight here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there are. There's like the core rule book, and then there's the spearhead rule book, which is like a a baby rule book. Yeah, which is like the combat patrol of of uh, Sigmar. All right, we got a couple stickers here that we'll hit with the hobby knife. So yeah, Skaventide, you know, the fifth Chaos God. I wonder if they're going to take the storyline into 40k proper at some point. I know we've got our little we've got our little Chaos Demon God coming up at some point or the guy who's trying to become the fifth god. A millions of bases with slots it looks like. Yeah, it looks like uh, everything in this bag has slots. Hmm. I'm assuming most of these are going to be push fit. I assume so. I would assume so, yeah. Actually, if I put one thing at a time on this backdrop, is it easier to see? It might. It is easier to see. This looks like... Uh, the, yeah, these are the Ogor, right? The rat ogres. Yeah. Nice. Um, the new There's Stormcast. Stormcast shields. Nice detailing on the actual shields. Yeah. Hammer kids. They got the hammers. Hammer kids. Emo. The emos are here. This looks like the same thing, I think. Yeah, it's probably going to be a couple duplicate sprues, right? Because there's a bunch of clan rats, and I assume those are all dupe sprues. I assume so, too, yeah. That'd be bonkers. They're like 50 unique. Oh, yeah. These are the big flyers. Um, this is the 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 rider boss, it looks like. The rat, the Skaven on the big, on the big rat. Yeah. Yeah. Looks like it. Um, cannon dudes. Oh yeah, the Gisales or whatever. Big old rifle looking things. Yeah. I think it's funny because people have said that in Warhammer 40k, the humans are basically like the Skavens of Age of Sigmar. Because they're everywhere and they're always using guns. And we've got a god, so now that now that there's a fifth god, maybe maybe the emperor will be a chaos god at some point. And this is the stormcast bird person, bird rider. It looks like it, yeah. It's a pretty big sprue for a character, but it is a pretty big character. It's pretty big. He's like pretty uh, big box. Yeah. Got flaming swords. He's got a crazy staff thing. We got some. We got a spooky knife with some rat tail, but oh, also we have. So this is a, this sword. is like a a, um, a sprue with both, or is this like a half half sprue? Like the right side pretty is, sure this is half half. Pretty yeah. sure this is a stormcast character, and this is a skaven character. Yeah. Probably. Right. Yeah. yeah. Do the different sprues taste different? No. Let's see. Tastes righteous. <laughs> it probably tastes filthy. Mm, yep. That's that's gonna need a little uh, barbecue sauce or something. <laughs> I 
more rat ogre stuff? Oh, no, this is the big gun. The machine gun. Yeah, the big gun that they push around. That can blow up and blow up your own uh, Skaven, because Skaven lives are worthless. Oh, dang. That's a huge piece. We have a lot of big capes here. I don't love painting caves. What about you? Um, I don't know. I just, I just like slop, slop it on there and then push stuff around until it seems mediocre and then I move on. Yeah, I hate painting the insides of capes and I refuse, at the moment I still refuse to do sub-assemblies, so the backs of capes kill Same. me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the backs of capes are definitely the worst. Because I'm like, I don't know, I can't paint between this guy's legs. And if I see it, I'm going to know, so. Luckily, most of the time you'll never see the the backside of the cape underneath someone's legs because you're never looking at your minis from that direction. Yeah. Millions of clan rats, good. Good, good, Four Mordheim, months. Mordheim group. Um, this one, I'm guessing, is the same. It's the the ninja, duplicate. ninja in the background. Yep, running around, yelling at me, telling me that she wants to go outside. Is this... Is this is the... There's 50 of these dudes, right? Yeah, I think so. Or 40 of them? I think the spearhead is half of the box for the Skaven. At least for the clan rats, because I think the they mentioned that there's 50 Skaven miniatures. Oh, yeah, like, including the other stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think it might be 40 clan rats, but I'm not 100% sure. Or maybe 30, yeah. I don't know. Anyways, clan rats. Yeah, there's, it's, it's a few bit. Um, they're doubled, yeah. so it's going to be an even number. Uh, and then this is the terrain sprue. Oh, uh, kill team size? Yeah, probably. Some yeah, back world, some uh, back feudal world, you know? That actually, some of those bits look pretty cool, so. There's one bit that came loose here, and it is a Stormcast head. <laughs> is it the Squidward head? Squidward head. It's got a big nose. It's, um, I don't know if you can see oh, that Oh, no, at it's all, a dude. It's an actual guy's just head. A, just a regular dude, yeah. Yeah, a regular di guy that has been killed dozens of times yes um and then also in here we have some of the funky sized bases oh yeah cavalry i think some of those are gisales for the skaven that bigger one i assume is for Stor the stormcast griff, griff mount and the smaller one is maybe the skaven mounted or maybe. Flip -flop. Yeah, it's hard to know. Uh, that's like definitely in the rule. That's definitely in the instruction booklets kind of deal. Yeah. Um. Oh. <clears throat> What's this? Is this like the scenario? Oh, we just gave away that code. Water at Hell Crown, and we gave away the code. I think this might Make be their digital the campaign because I think Leviathan also had a battle for a planet, so maybe that's this. Yeah, and then I guess we, I don't know, either give away the code or edit it out. Here, let's just slap it up so that uh, the first person who sees this can steal the code and take our entry. You think it? Um, this is one. That's definitely the books, right? Or there's, some of the books. There's two of these oh. big packages in here, and that is the the rest of this. All right, so millions of tokens, instructions, and. Oh, this feels this. Oh, feel nice. I'm guessing this one's going to have the cards and tokens. And this one, I'm pretty sure there's two books in here that are both full size, maybe. But yeah. we'll find out soon. All right, let's bust it open. Yeah, I kind of assumed that the there would be oh, one full go. size book, and the second one would be like the General's Handbook size. Mm. But it seems like they're both full size. And those are got... the new tactical cards, or are these the faction? Um, I wonder if these are for spearhead, like the secondary objectives and stuff, but maybe not. Um, I know battle tactics are kind of like the tag ops of AOS, but that might apply to Sigmar too, because I know that some of these cards are for um, the fourth, the big one, and some of them are for spearhead. Yeah. 
we've got some twists. We need better labeling here, GW. We got battle tactics. Yeah, because there's no words on the back. It's just symbols. I think the symbols are different factions. So I'm guessing the orange is something random. Yellow is Stormcast, and, then, and green is Skaven. That well, would be my guess. Like, this symbol is twists. Mm. This symbol is battle tactics. Uh. And that seems to, and then, and then there will be a green one somewhere. Those look the same. Yeah, these are the same, and then these are green twists. Oh, twists for both sides. Yeah. Uh, so they, it seems like they have separate twists from each other. I see. So those are two separate decks, basically. The yeah. the silver face or the gold face cards are for both sides that are similar, and then there's twists on both sides. These are. Maybe data cards? General's Handbook 2024-25. Oh. Okay, so here's all the the rules, the battle tactics, death battle tactics, universal battle tactics, uh, battle plans. There we go. Those are the map layouts. Nice. So every tournament player is going to want this stuff, but not everybody's every going to want clan rents. Yeah, nice. And then uh, I assume dry erasable? feels like it yeah you can yeah. definitely dry erase that looks a little small though so you probably need a pretty fine tip dry dry erase marker for to use this yeah you definitely would yeah yeah hand size probably not not great for normal dry erases yeah so it's like this is all the the core rules double-sided one of them has art and then there's a bunch of layouts yeah but no terrain on any of these, so I know they made a big deal about adding ter more specific terrain rules, but I don't see any the terrain icons on these, so maybe that'll be just for tournament play. All right, then we've got our assembly instructions. Yep, we've got our terrain. Mix that yep. into the 40k terrain. No one's going to notice the difference. Oh, yeah. Oh, probably the bigger guy. Yeah. Got a Griffhound, got some flyers. Got some tiny dorks that keep uh, the Stormcast Eternals from going insane from their 10,000 years of torment. Right? Yeah, they're like people who are from the same bloodline as the Stormcast. They're like, don't forget, your name is Trevor. They probably say it in a more epic way. Sorry, Age of Sigmar players who are watching a Kill Team channel for some reason. Look at these guys. You can have double hammer dudes. Mm -hmm. Talk about hammer time. That is, in fact, the smaller base. All right, cool. Simple enough. He's a vibe. The sick model <clears throat> with sickening toxins. Oh, the toxins. biggest base is oh, this a, cannon. It's for the gun, huh? I kind of wonder if this box is going to be internally balanced, too. Because I know Leviathan was basically... I think most of the 40k players were saying, like, yeah, if you play the Tyranid side, you will lose every game. <laughs> Um, yeah. Uh, was it, a, was there like a big disparity in points as well? I think there's a big disparity in points and there's nothing that could crack the Terminator. So hopefully that's not the case here. Yeah. I, I think in like a Warcom article, they said it's 1200 points on both sides. Oh, they But don't. maybe I'm making that up. And this is this the double-sided mat that can be used for spearhead, I think. Yeah. It's not just a floppy paper one like they've done sometimes. This is a full, like thick good quality cardboard one like we've seen in kill team a lot yeah it's got the There's eight fold it's inside. like the eight chunk one which is nice i do like this i, I think this will like... help a lot for newer players just because like this is like pre-made objectives yeah they are these are supposed to be these are the objectives you're fighting over so on both oh, sides that's... you can see on the other side they go off to the edge so like you can't you can't actually fight on that corner so it actually changes how much of the map you can use so i think this is a really big upgrade for yeah for just like newer players and i'm hoping that if there is a new edition of kill team they can follow through on stuff like this too just like nice 
like the core gameplay for kill team is excellent if they could just make it a little bit easier to onboard people that would be great and stuff like this would go a long way yeah this is very cool and i like that they had the the lines down the middle and stuff like that like mm-hmm. that was yeah. i was not expecting that and i was pleasantly surprised and now the actual stuff that the age of sigmar players care about the rule books kind of smaller than i would have expected too right compared to their normal rule book size i don't know this feels this feels pretty big and donkey yeah maybe it's about the same yep oh, and there are two books one for the spearhead yeah yeah one for straight up spearhead and one for the actual core book and they how much bigger is the core book than the spearhead it's like about double um yeah it seems pretty accurate probably um i actually have the older core book on the shelf like 10 feet away and i can side by side compare them if you're interested in that Mm, i'm good i think this i mean if you want to uh if it's easy for you to get a hold of but both of the pieces both of these books looks nice I think this yeah, this new like a, uh, face like art about the same size. Yeah, the new face art for Age of Sigmar looks pretty good. Where we've got on the art art department doing a good job. Even if I Quick. think the model is like way overworked, but yeah, tons of lore. The nah. Dang, this thing is like all lore. <laughs> yeah, that is the name of the game with Sigmar. Yeah, what the heck? There's like no core rules in here. <laughs> yeah, the, the core rules are just like a couple pages. Okay. I'm assuming. Well, okay, here there we, we go. go. We started. Can you uh, do a page comparison between what looks like rules and what looks like lore? Is this going to go advanced rules? Half the glory, I think, is their narrative stuff, but that's still rules. Yeah. All right. And then the index. So it's pretty much like this is rules, and <laughs> this Almost is lore. Like two to one or three to one. Damn. Nice. All right. Well, it looks like the art is popping off the pages for these, even if I can't, like, like Discord is compressing some of the images. But overall, it looks like a really nice rule book. So cool yeah. to see. Got fire. Hey, hey, hey. Hello, friends. Welcome. We are here to talk about the Skaven Tide box. You know, this is a continuation video, or, you know, right before this, it'll be, have been our unboxing, but we've spent some time with the materials and we've built some of the models. Yeah, it's a cool box. Um, I've built out enough to form the the spearhead for the Stormcast, and they're easy to build. Um, they're, they're push fit. Um, went together nicely, and they have been really fun to paint. Um, I, without doing sub-assemblies, it's pretty easy to reach all the, the corners on all the models for the spearhead. So that's cool. Not every, like, 40K model you can say that about. Anything with a cape is generally a disaster. Yeah, and then, like, the dude with the cape is, you can mostly kind of, like, reach it. There's only, like, a tiny little area. I don't know. I've seen worse. Yeah, for the Skaven, I think the Knob East is going to have, I'm going to have some issues. But, you know, my first step for all of my paint jobs is always some sort of Zenithal coat. And I think all of the Skaven looked very nice with a, I did a blue base coat and then a Wraithbone, basically a Zenithal on top, just to give me some color values to work with as I paint. The Knob East might be a pain in the butt, but the Skaven, the actual like little clan rats, I think they're called. Those were kind of a joy to put together because they were like two pieces and they just snapped together and they all look great. And some of them, it's kind of kind of wild to see how much range of motion there is off of two pieces. Yeah, pretty dynamic poses. Yeah, especially because like more recently I've flirted around or at least seen Shatterpoint models or other stuff and like they look nice, but poses are generally very T posey, staticky, kind of like. It, they look nice, but they also are like generally like five or six pieces to put together. And I'm like looking at this tiny Skaven clan rat, and I'm like, oh, he does look nice. Yeah, yeah. The <clears throat> I think my favorite kit that I put together is the prosecutors. They're like the uh, the angel dudes. They've got big wings and spears, and they are very cool. And they're pretty well balanced for like they look they look like they'd be kind of wobbly and easy to knock over and just fall over on their own. But they're they're like they are balanced well. Um, which is an impressive feat also. 
Yeah. For, on my part, you know, I haven't built the big rattling gun and I haven't built the Gisales because those are not part of the those are not part of the spearhead. I've only built just the spearhead and, you know, within that spearhead, a couple of the models are carved away from my little Mordheim side quest right now. And I'm very much looking forward to painting that that set of eight models like a distinct color from the rest of the spearhead. So be on the watch out for that. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm definitely planning to dabble in, in Spearhead, which also you can hear more about our insight into Spearhead on the video that's coming out on Monday. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. I think for me as a fully non Age of Sigmar head, I, you know, dabbled in the old world a little bit. I paid very little attention to fantasy. I was actually very surprised when I was reading some of these novels because I've been flirting with the old world that, oh, Noln is from the old world. Like a lot of the names of paints are actually based in the fantasy series, which I had no clue about. And for me, I just spent a lot of time leafing through the book and reading the lore because the book is like, 75% lore and like 25% rules, which I guess just speaks to the Age of Sigmar player base in general, that that's what they would prefer in their codexes. Yeah, it's definitely a lot more fluff heavy. Yeah, and there was a small section for narrative rules. So I do think that there's like a nice little pathway for people to like start on their newer, smaller format and then like slowly upgrade while doing the Path of Glory all the way along, which I think 40k pays lip service to but the game is not super fun at 500 points so uh, you know i've never really recommended people actually do that yeah it, it seems like the, the this box does have a nice arc to to get you going start you off on spearhead um enough stuff to build some more kits to do some bigger games and and really just kind of like it's a amazing on ramp to an point. army game yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whereas, like, I think Leviathan was terrible <laughs> from what I remember hearing about people playing the games where the Tyrant is basically no way to kill a brick of five Terminators. So the five Terminators just sit there, never die, and blow everything up. It's cool. Which is, I guess it's generally. Yeah. <laughs> so they get to feel like Terminators, but the Tyranid player just gets to feel like the Zerg. <laughs> yeah. Just getting absolutely so. slayed. So I think, you know, from from our one game of the inbox spearheads, those felt like pretty balanced games, even though obviously in game Stormcast Eternals are supposed to represent a much more elite force. It did feel like both the factions kind of echoed their their design differences without it being crazy. Yeah. And, you know, for my part, I'm looking forward to dabbling in a, the future video. Check out our opinions on Monday. We'll be releasing a little thing on Goonhammer for that. But as far as the contents of the box for anyone kind of enjoying Age of Sigmar or curious about Age of Sigmar, this does seem like a good jumping in point, especially with a friend. Because like high five, one of you becomes a terrible scheming vermin and the other person dons the armor and gets turned into a thunderbolt. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. I'm pleasantly surprised with how much like I like it more than I was expecting. Um, it's definitely worth checking out. Yeah, I think the flavor is a nice change of pace. And I think one of the big things from switching from 40K to fantasy is you just get a different range of textures to paint. So one of the things that I found very engaging when I started, when I built an old world army just kind of for fun on the side, I was like, oh, look at all these techniques I never have to use. Or look at all these colors that I'm just like, eh, never bothered using. So, and Mordheim is the same thing. I'm like, oh, I'm building these grungy little dirt bags. So it's just kind of fun to paint. Some of them are, you know, the models are smaller. So you can get some stuff together pretty quickly. Yeah. Uh, thanks again, GW, for giving us a Skaven Tide box. I don't think either of us was expecting this or desiring this, but both of us have been pleasantly surprised. Yeah, I definitely am pleased, surprised, glad to be on board. And uh, yeah, check us out on Monday when we talk about Spearhead for real. See you there.